my medicine cabinet is my kitchen drawers facts Please keep in mind this information may not fit your specific health circumstances. Dosage depends on one's age, sex, current health state, etc. You never want to delay or disregard seeking professional medical advice from your doctor, herbalist, or other qualified health care provider. Peace. You're now rocking with B from Be That Self. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And if you're new, thank you for tuning in. Today, I want to share with you all the herbs that I currently use how I use them and yeah, that's about it. I get most of my herbs from Star Wars Botanicals. Uh, you can find a link in the description box or I go to the local Eastern Food Co-op where they have an entire aisle dedicated to herbs. A lot of the herbs sold at the Eastern Food Co-op are provided by Star Wars Botanicals as well. So it really depends if you want to buy bulk, save money, shop online, or if you just want to get what you need, it's better to just go in the store in person. So I'm going to dive right in and start with one of my heavy hitter herbs heavyweight champion sarsaparilla i have two different kinds of sarsaparilla one originating from mexico and another originating from jamaica jamaican sarsaparilla is said to be the strongest i recently found this at the local eastern food co-op running for about 64 dollars per pound but for this amount it only cost me about four dollars three dollars and change not bad sarsaparilla said to hold the highest concentration of iron among all plants dr sabi spoke highly of it it helps to induce sweating to promote detoxification known for relieving sexual impotence it helps bind toxins to be eliminated from the body also good for headaches migraines and colds what i do with sarsaparilla i prepare it as a tea i allow with the steep in hot water for about 10 to 15 minutes just to extract all the nutrients from it alongside drinking it as a tea i also believe you can use it as a face wash once you steep it and let the liquid cool you can apply it to your skin the taste of sarsaparilla i find to be rather enjoyable i usually combine it with burdock or yellow dock or all of the three in this bag i have raspberry leaf cut and sifted raspberry leaf has a real enjoyable taste to it for me especially when paired with ginger key lime and a hint of agave. I have been trying to ease off of agave when consuming these herbs lately. I feel my energy levels are up more when I exclude any processed sugars, even if they are considered to be alkaline. Anyways, what I like about raspberry leaf is that it's high in nutrients, has a lot of minerals packed into it, potassium, phosphorus, iron, and calcium. It treats many different stomach elements or things involving the stomach, such as diarrhea, soothing stomach pain or cramps, and it helps stimulate proper blood circulation. What I do is I prepare it as a tea, let it steep for five to 10 minutes, and I'm good to go. Here we have yellow dock, and I have a decent amount left over. I haven't used much of yellow dock. It has so many benefits, such as treating iron deficiency, relieving diarrhea and constipation. It helps reduce pain and swelling of the nasal passage and respiratory tract it's also very beneficial for the queens out there dealing with any menstrual pain or heavy bleeding this is one of those herbs I don't use often because of how powerful it is. I do tend to pair it with other herbs such as sarsaparilla and burdock, like using a part of each to prepare as a herbal blend for tea. Or it can work as an amazing face wash. I've seen some people place it in capsules and consume it that way. Here we have a big bag of chickweed and I can't remember why I bought it. I just think I was in the spirit of collecting herbs at the time, but I still haven't opened it and I've had it for about six months now. I honestly forgot about it and it would have been great to use prior to my fast because uh, this is one of those herbs that help suppress the appetite, you know, kind of takes away the hunger pangs that you may feel. It helps deal with any minor irritations in the digestive tract. It also increases the amount of urine you secrete, uh, which helps flush out some of the toxins within the body. With that being said, if you plan to take chickweed, I highly recommend that you're making sure that you're properly hydrated throughout the day. It also promotes a healthy nervous system. Here I have some Damiana leaf, and I still have quite a lot left. Damiana was one of those herbs that Sebi used in his product. I can't rem recall which one, but uh, it's great 
as an aphrodisiac. Um, it helps enhance the libido and it's said to increase blood circulation in the genital area which will be great for those experiencing issues with uh, impotence it's one of those herbs that's a mood enhancer i believe that's why i haven't used it as much is because i'm trying to practice periods of abstinence it helps nourish the reproductive organs for men it's said to sustain erection and prevent premature ejaculation so if you and your partner are looking to heat things up this may be the herb for you if you are using Damiana to increase your libido, you want to prepare and drink it as a tea at least 30 minutes prior to activity. This herb you want to steep in hot water for 10 to 15 minutes. In this mason jar, I have some elderberry, one of my favorite herbs, hands down. I just love the natural sweet taste that it has when you allow it to steep in some hot water. Uh, you really don't need any sweetener for it. I love pairing elderberry with ginger. Uh, it's really great for boosting the immune system. Elderberry is good for aiding in digestion. It helps enhance your respiratory health. It enhances bone health, aids in skin care. Uh, so many benefits, honestly. With elderberry, I let it steep in the pot for about 10 to 15 minutes and drink it as a tea. Some people make elderberry syrup with it, but I just don't like the idea of adding so much agave or or some people use honey, uh, not say be approved of course, but I just like to drink it as a tea. Or once you let it cool, you can make a soda out of it by adding some agave, lime, and sparkling spring water. Here I have stinging nettle root, and then I also have stinging nettle leaf. Stinging nettle is a very powerful herb. Um, it does promote release of uric acid from the joints. It helps break down kidney stones, reduces hypertension, helps asthma sufferers, and good for the respiratory system. And it also minimizes skin problems. What I do with stinging nettle is I prepare it as a tea. In most cases, I'll combine the leaf and the root together to prepare that tea extract. Some even allow it to cool to use as a face wash. And this baggie here, I got Eyebright, which I got from the local food co-op. It's good for assisting with issues such as allergies, colds, headaches, earaches. But what it's really known for is assisting with eye conditions, which is the main reason why I bought it. From the times I've used it, I've seen an improvement in my eyes. It has a lot of minerals that are crucial for eye development, such as zinc, selenium, and copper. These are great to help support healthy retinas and lenses. You can drink Eye Bright as a tea. It can either come in the form of being cut and sifted or in a powder. And I've only been able to find the powder form, which you can put into capsules if you like. I let the powder sit into hot steeping water. Once 10 to 15 minutes have passed, I strain it and use it as an eye wash. Use one of those eye cups and you know, apply it to both eyes. And it works really well. I can feel the improvement within my eyesight. Last but not least, I also have bilberry, uh, which is also good for your eyes. It reminds me of elderberry in a sense of that sweet taste, but a bit lighter in taste in comparison to elderberry. But because the tastes are similar, I do tend to combine it a lot with elderberry whenever I am making a tea out of it. Add some ginger in there. I love adding ginger to elderberry and bilberry. As you can see, most of these herbs I consume as a tea. However, if I did have a capsule machine, I would possibly get like maybe a coffee grinder, grind up some of the herbs such as yellow dog burdock or sarsaparilla. That's really something that you wanna do more research on, uh, whether you're taking these as a tea or you're grinding them to make compounds for yourself later. I just highly recommend you do the research or, you know, consult with a physician, get some advice from an herbalist just to ensure that you're being safe. Me personally, I have gotten to a point where I don't use herbs often. I do tend to lean towards them for intentional purposes of my journey to healing. Like if I plan to do a fast, I may use them during a fast or I may use them prior to starting a type of fast but i don't rely on herbs through my day-to-day -day life they're just there if i want to reach a goal quicker or to help assist me on my journey if i find i'm struggling somewhat with that being said i hope you all found this video helpful question of the day what herb do you feel you should always have in your cupboard let me know in the comments section if you enjoyed today's video hit the like if you didn't feel free to hit the unlike it is what it is be sure to check out other videos recommended by YouTube here on the channel. Until next time, 2098. Bye, Daye.